Turn it over to our musicians. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. This is the day yeah. that the Lord has made. Yeah. Not yesterday. Come on now. Yesterday is gone. Good day. Tomorrow may never be ours. But this is the day yeah. that the Lord has made. Yeah. We will. When I say we, I don't mean me. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Come on, put those happy hands together if you're glad to be here this day. Amen. So many incidents and accidents that are going on. Amen. We might not see, we live to see tomorrow, but this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. I used to have a song back in the day. I love music, y'all. I just love music. Uh, and the song said, what did you come out here for? So I asked the question today, what did you come out here for? Did you come to praise him this morning? Did you come to lift him this morning? Did you come and give him glory this morning? What did you come out here for? Amen. Amen. We came to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. You would stand to your feet. Those that can stand, stand to your feet. Because see, we stand for the President of the United States. In a lot of churches we stand when our pastors enter. You go to court, you got to stand for the judge. But you know, I have to tell you to stand for Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's just stand and give him another round of applause because he has been just that good. Amen. He has kept us all night long, touched us with the finger of love. Amen. Our eyes came open. Amen. We had the activities of our limbs. And we are here today to give him glory. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your presence, God. We ask God in the name of Jesus, God, that you will come in, this, in the midst of this house, God. Oh, Lord, let your Holy Spirit move from heart to heart and breast to breast, God. Oh, God, change us today, God. Let us hear something, God. Let us see something, God. Let us feel something, God, that will make us different when we leave out of here today, God. Oh, God, we ask that your presence rest on each person in here today. Oh, God, and give them what they need to make it to the next day. Oh, God, we give your name, praise, glory, and honor, because it is already that. For this, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The choir is going to give us a hymn of praise, and we're going to ask that you join in with us. Amen. Says, let the glory of the Lord rise among us.
asking God to come in. Let his spirit ride in us. Rise in us. Amen. Every round gets higher and higher. Amen. He said, I even if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So we have to let it rise. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask the deacon to come and lead us in our morning prayer. Again, we say good morning to everyone. Truly, God is good. If we take an inventory of what he has done for each and every one as a one-on-one -on -one God, you know, because you're standing here, you're breathing. And God didn't allow you to come here without a blessing. So let's give him the praises and the glory yeah. for being the awesome creator that he is. Yeah. You know, because if we look around us, the trees, the flowers, the sun, the moon, and the water, and all the things that he made, they honor and bless him. Yes. So we should do the same yes. because he made us to bless him. Yeah. So let us go to him in the prayer eternal and all wise creator yes. father god we come to you yes. Yes. first to say thank you. thank you thank you dear god for your love your grace and your mercy in which you have shown us and father god we ask that you would just look upon we your people that you made And we ask that if there's need of forgiveness, we ask that you will forgive us for any sins in which we may have committed. Yes. Yes. And then, Father God, we ask that you would bless us and heal us, save us and fill us and use us for your glory. For, Father God, we realize that we are blessed, but others are less fortunate. Yes. They may be going through all types of situations all types of Job experiences, and all types of battles. But, Father God, we know that you are the one and only that can make everything all right. So, Father God, we give you the praises and the thanks for just blessing us to be in this house at this appointed yes. second. And we ask that your Holy Spirit would just saturate these grounds. And, Lord, as you allow your Holy Spirit to saturate these grounds and to bless we, this house, and all this community, we ask that you would just meet each and every one of the needs. Lord, you know our needs, you know our wants, and you know our desires, as well as our shortcomings. So, Father God, have your way. And, Father God, as you have your way, we thank you for healings. We thank you for salvations. We thank you for victories of all types. And we thank you for blessings that have not yet come. Yes. Now, Father God, remember our relatives, family, friends, and members. Remember those who seek salvation and even are saved, are in need of salvation and saving. So, Lord, we yield to you and your Holy Spirit and ask that you would just take control and just bless the speaker of the hour. Yes. Bless the shepherd of the house as well and, his, and their households. And as you do so, Lord, remember those who are less fortunate throughout the land and throughout the world. Going through whatever the situation that is, Lord, we know that you're going to work it out as you see fit. And we know that you're going to bind Satan in every way. So, Lord, we give you the victory and claim the victory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you could continue to stand. Thank you, Deacon Robinson, for that awesome prayer this morning. 
Good morning again to you, you, and you, and all of those that are watching us via uh, live stream, YouTube, or Facebook. Our morning scripture this morning will be coming from John 10, John chapter 10. And Reverend Wright gave me one scripture to read, but I'm going to go to the beginning of the chapter and read down to that one scripture that he gave me. Amen. John chapter 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a, a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth, forth, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that enter came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. This is the uh, verse number 10 is the verse that he will be preaching from. The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have that like, have that, ha and that they might have it more abundantly. Let me read that again, number 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The word of God for the people of God, blessed be the name of God. You may be seated in the presence of God and the choir will give us a song of inspiration. Amen. Right, technology is good, but sometimes technology messes up. Amen. So we're just going to continue to uh, sit in his presence. Amen. And the choir will give us a song of inspiration. You know, uh, I went to church on Friday night, and the young man preached. Ain't nothing new. We need to go back to the old time way. Ain't nothing new. And at one part of the service, he said, stop the music. And we just sang hand clapping, foot stumping. Because ain't nothing new. Amen. All right. We ready?
you want to be in the will of God. Yeah. Amen. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. I said the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Amen. Don't you want to be in his will? Amen. Don't you want to walk according to his will? Amen. Don't you want to pray according to his will? God's will is what I want for my life. Amen. We're going to ask that you stand so that we can re recite our church theme. Each one reach one. Matthews 28, 19, and 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. You may be seated. Thank God that he said he is with us always. How long is always? Forever. Amen. And forever is a long time. Hallelujah. I'm with you always in the good times and the bad times. When you're up and when you're down, God says, I'm with you. Amen. Even when you can't trace me, he said, I'm with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when you pray and pray and don't get no results and you think God has forgot about you, he said, I'm with you. Hallelujah. And then he made it uh, uh, certain. He said, surely. I'll be with you always until the end of the age. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Say the very end, not yes. just to the end, but to the very end right. of age. He said, I'm with you. Amen. 
And all you got to do is call him. You don't have to call him loud. You don't have to call him long. And sometimes all you have to do is just say Jesus. And he'll come and see about you. Glory to God. This morning we want to recognize our visitors and guests if we have any. And if so, we're asking that you would stand. Praise God and praise God. We ask that you give your name and any words you may have. Greg Berman. Good morning, Greg. We are so happy that you stopped by First Baptist this morning. We pray that something said, something sang, prayed, or preached will inspire you to keep you all next week, today and next week, and that you will come back to visit us again. And the next time you won't be a visitor, but you'll be a friend. Amen. Amen. We just say thank God for all of you who came out this morning to the house of worship. We praise God for just giving us that uh, nudge to get up this morning, to come on out to the house of the Lord. Amen. We're going to do our announcements. The social media portion of audiovisual is in need of help and seeks someone to learn the live stream process. Interested persons can see Jerry Murdoch after service or e email him at Finn Secretary at FBC Fuqua at let me let me let me start all over again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let me just do it this way. Email Jerry at F I N S E C R E T A R Y at FBC F U Q U A Y dot org. And if I'm not mistaken, it is in your program. It is in your program. Amen. Thanks in advance for helping your church reach a broader audience, a broader audience to spread the good news of our Lord. Bible study will be held on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. via Zoom. We are studying the book of Job. If you are joining by desktop, laptop, iPad, or smartphone, see the instructions in the program for the Zoom link. Uh, First Baptist Church, Fequay Arena, will be celebrating our 112th homecoming on Sunday, October the 20th, 2024. We will be doing the assessment of $365. There are 188 days until homecoming. $1.94 a day times 188 equals $364.72. Or $60.83 times 6 equals 364 dollars 98 Put them two pennies in there, that make it 365. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the North Carolina Association for Women in Ministry will host the, our annual Interdenominational Press Summit on Saturday, May 4, 2024 at 8.30 a.m. at the Victory Tabernacle Church on 1329 Highway 70, Garner, North Carolina, 27529. Registration is free. Register by April 30th, 2024 at www.eventbrite.com a continental breakfast and lunch will be included if you go on to eventbrite and you uh, register and it says that it's sold out disregard that just go down to register and then just follow the instructions uh, as it is listed on the eventbrite uh, website the Wake Missionary Baptist Association Annual National Day of Prayer Breakfast will be held on Thursday, May 2nd, 2024 at 6.30 a.m. at First Baptist Church, 101 South Wilburton Street, Raleigh, North Carolina. Parking will be in the rear of the church and on Morgan Street. A free breakfast will be served. If you will be attending, please notify the secretary before April 28th, which is today, uh, so that they can get a head count. So if you will be attending. See our secretary. Amen. The memory verse. Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Mark 4, Mark 10, I'm sorry, 14. The thought of the day. Always remember that people's opinions don't change God's plans for you. 
Amen. At this time, we will have pastoral remarks. I'd like to say good morning to First Baptist and to our visiting friends. Good morning. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It's good to see each and every one of you, even though we are few in number. We are here to worship the Lord. Amen. We are here to give God the praise. I do want to say to you all that, that we've had this theme for quite some time now. I'm ready to take it off the screen and you all quote it without it being on the screen. Are you ready for it? How does it start? Therefore. Therefore Go and make disciples of all nations. I'll stop right there. Learn the two verses so that we can take it off the screen because I want it to be in your spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. I noticed that a lot of you are looking at the screen uh, as if you don't know it yet. We've been doing this a while. You should know those two verses. So please learn those two verses. Amen? Uh, I am excited to be here today uh, to worship the Lord with you. I miss my church family. Uh, we are family, good, bad, or indifferent. We are family. And that makes me excited to be here to worship with you. And uh, we'll, we have a word. Uh, God, God is going to send a word today through the man of God. I want you to open your ears and your hearts to receive what the Lord has to say to us. Amen. Amen. I'm not bringing the word, not today, but I will soon. But I thank God to be here to worship. Continue to pray for my wife and me. She will be back when she, come, when she decides to come back. But we are so happy to just be uh, free of whatever has come upon us. And uh, we'll, we'll end this journey together. And I know that you're praying for us because we sense and feel your prayers. Amen. Continue to pray for us, to continue to encourage us in whatever way that you possibly can. And let's could do what the theme says, go and make disciples. Have you invited somebody to your church? Are you excited about where you worship the Lord? Then go make disciples of, uh, of all people, all nations, and invite them to come in the house of the Lord. Thank you for this moment. God bless you. God keep you. And may heaven smile upon you is our prayer. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. We'll try one more time. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm just one of those particular persons about when we praising the Lord, we ought to act like we're praising the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because, I mean, all he did for us. And we can't even give him a good hearty amen or praise the Lord or thank you, Jesus. But, you know, we'll get there one day, I'm sure. Amen. But I'm here to uh, prepare us for our offering, our tithes and offering. And, you know, Christ uh, admonished us that we should pay our tithes and our offering because that is to support the ministries that go out from our churches or whatever uh, institution it might be coming from because there's a lot of different ways that the ministries go out. Some will go out over television, uh, radio, internet, all types of uh, gadgets people use to get a message across. And it costs money. You know, as strange as it might seem, it costs money to get this message across. And why should we be concerned about getting the message out? Well, I can think of a few good reasons of my own, and that's my family. Somehow, some of my family members heard about this guy called Jesus, and they fell in love with him. 
and they committed their soul to him and they began to serve him and now they are gone and guess what they're with him and I praise God for that so that's why I don't mind paying my tithes and giving an offering because I hope it helps somebody else family so now we're going to turn this part of the service over to the ushers that they might prepare to come forth and take up our offering of today. In Jesus' name, amen. the Lord at all times. Yeah. He's good. Yes. Lord, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for one more, for one more sunny day. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, yes. for all your goodness, grace, and mercy. Yes. Father, we ask that you bless this offering. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Yes, God. Bless the ones that gave. Bless the ones that did not have the substance to give. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For these blessings, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. All things come of thee. 
Y'all, I know we few in number, but it's a little quiet in here this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank you for your liberal giving. Hallelujah. We thank you uh, that you had the substance to give. We just bless God for who he is. Amen. Amen. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. I said earlier, if I, even I be lifted up, that's what Jesus said. He said, I'll draw all men unto me. Can we call that name Jesus? Can I hear you say Jesus? There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Healing is in that name Jesus. Deliverance is in that name Jesus. See what let me tell you what, what let me tell you. Let me tell you that see with the with the, the, the COVID and what what it was designed to do. You know, we had to wear those masks, and that was designed to stop your praise, to stop. See, everything that we do is in our mouth. God said in the beginning, God said, let there be. When what God said was what, what it, it was. If he said, let there be light, it was light. Let there be the darkness. It was what God said. Amen. And then Jesus goes on the scene over in the New Testament. And he tells the disciples, I'm going away from. I'm going away. He said, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to leave you a comforter who will bring back all things to your remembrance. Amen. So he wants us. He said, the, the work I do is good, but greater works than these shall you do. Amen. But see, you got to open up your mouth and say something. You got to give God a sacrifice of praise. You got to let him know that you appreciate him. Amen. The power of life and death is in your tongue. Hallelujah. So you can speak it into existence. So you got to say something. So, you know, I know you say it's in my heart. God knows my heart. God knows, yes, he does. He knows the very intent of your heart. I, he knows your thoughts are far off. But until you open up your mouth. And see, so when you, that's what the COVID was designed to put the mask on to keep you quiet. You're going to have to be like that blind man inside the road. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. And the, Lord, the louder he cried out, Jesus stopped and said, do you want to be healed? But we got to cry loud and spare not. Amen. I didn't mean to get up and say all of that, but it's just quiet in here today. Amen. What you come out here for if you didn't come to give him no praise? Hallelujah. Amen. Like I tell you, listen, I, I, I do this at the house. I stump the dust out my own carpet at home. Amen. I slip and slide in the bathroom on the hardwood floors. I, you know, I praise God. Amen. And if, a, if one get on me, I'll stop the car and get out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Everything that have breath praise the Lord. I said everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. This morning we got a preacher, preacher this morning. Hallelujah. Who can preach, will preach. And if you help him, get up the hill, I believe you can get down by himself. Amen. And our very own Dr. Reverend Brian Wright. Hear him for his grace and ability. Hear him for what the Lord has given him. Hear him. And if that word finds you where you are, let it quicken you. And you leave out better than what you came in. Amen. The choir is going to give us a a song of preparation, and then the next voice that you'll hear would be that of our very own Dr. Reverend Brian Wright. Amen. Come on, praise God. Come on, let's give God some praise.
spirit still say yes now will your heart and soul say yes will your spirit still say yes if I told you what I really need will your heart and soul say yes now will your heart so say yes will your spirit still say yes if I told you what I need from thee Will your heart and soul say yes? Now will your heart and soul say yes? Will your spirit still say yes? Just say, yeah. open up your heart yeah. and tell the Lord, yes, yeah. say yes, yeah. say yes, Lord.
Anybody got a yes in their spirit today? Do you have a yes in your heart today? So that we can be drawn closer to him. Closer than close. And I know y'all wondering, why did she get back up here? I'm giving Reverend Wright time to get himself together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To thy precious bleeding side. Draw us nearer, God. To that precious bleeding side. To the precious bleeding side. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of his peace was upon us, and with his stripes, we are healed to that precious. Draw me nearer, draw me nearer. Lord, I want to touch you to that. Thank you for what you did on Calvary. Draw me, draw me nearer. Mm, last time. Amen. See, sometimes you just got to sit in this presence. 
Let him do what he need to do in us. Hallelujah. Let him do what he need to do for us. Hallelujah. 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 Rest on us, God. Have your way in this place. Hallelujah. Draw us, God, to thy precious bleeding side. And we will give you praise, glory, and honor. Glory to God. Church, say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. If you really love the Lord, say amen like you mean it. Amen. amen. Now put your hands together and give him a hand of praise. Thank you to um, this choir for singing. That hymn is very special to me. It's my favorite hymn. Certainly, praise God for allowing us this privilege of being here today and see those of you who pressed your way here. Good to see Pastor Larry and to all of the ministers and deacons and officers of this church. This has been a very tough week for me and I, I don't like to make excuses, but um, when you've been diagnosed with diabetes and they put you on all these types of medication that makes you sick, I had to go back to the doctor so that they could decrease the milligrams that I was taking. And I haven't begun to take all of the medicine, but I believe God to do something that man can't do. Amen. I want to thank God for the walking club, Sister Melissa. I didn't get that phone call, but I walked yesterday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But we praise God for this privilege. From the Gospel of John, you're hearing by Minister Mangum. The uh, tenth verse only. 10th chapter, verse 10, reads, The thief cometh not but, to, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I want to talk to you from this sermon entitled, The Thief, The Robber, The Enemy, and The Promise of the Savior. The Thief, The Robber, The Enemy, and The Promise of the Savior. 
Will you bow your heads in a word of prayer? Father, I thank you for this opportunity to stand again in your presence and before your people. Standing between heaven's gates. And I ask, oh God, that you would speak now through these lips of clay. Speak, Lord, and have thine own way. Draw me nearer. Nearer, blessed Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and we say amen. Us as you may readjust, give them a hand for they have served you well. I got a phone call last night, a friend of mine, musician friend, he says, Reverend, don't you want to come to High Point in the morning? I said, the devil is a lie. I said, no, my brother, you know better than that. Uh, it'll take a while for me, but I will come. Uh, but don't ever call me on short notice like that. <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> so we thank God. I think he was really just pulling my leg. My brothers and sisters, the devil has a threefold purpose in life. That is to kill, to steal, and destroy. I think we need to note that he's not playing games with us. While we are laughing and joking and playing, the devil means business in accomplishing his mission to kill, steal, and destroy. I realize that this is very familiar passage of scripture. It is well known uh, amongst millions of saints around the world, but today I want to see if I can provide us with some fresh insight into this powerful scripture rather than simply read it as we've read it a thousand times before. I just want to dig a little deeper into the Greek words behind these verses, uh, this verse, to see what we can glean from the treasures of the Greek New Testament. On the surface, or the basics of this text, we find uh, a thief. What is a thief? Matter of fact, I think we pretty much are familiar with what a thief is. A thief is one that which does uh, takes that which does not belong to them. That's what a thief is. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that there are some thieves in Fuquay. I'm not going to say First Baptist, I just said Fuquay. Uh, I do recall traveling to Israel. One of the things they tell you when you're traveling the streets of Jerusalem, to make sure that you put all your valuables in your front pocket because thieves will pick your pocket and they'll pick it so smoothly you wouldn't even know your stuff is gone until it's gone. <laughs> so a thief, my brother, is very cunning. Very cunning. There's a difference, however, between a thief and a robber. 
this text for examination identifies the actions of a thief, whereas Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, identifies the actions of a robber. You remember the text that says, Will a man rob God? The thief or theft and robbery are crimes that are interrelated, which makes people use these terms almost interchangeably. However, there are major differences between the two types of crimes. A thief conducts his operation in stealth mode when no one is around as he does not want any attractions, uh, any attention to himself. When you come home from work, you discover your stuff is gone. I've had that to happen to me before, twice. Robbery is a form of theft as the robber has the intentions to take away the property of someone else, but in addition here, he makes use of violence and or intimidation. It gives a picture of a bandit, a pickpocket, a thief, who is so artful in the way he steals that he, he exploits of thievery are nearly undetectable. This reminds me of the pickpockets who work the streets, certain areas of our major cities and even small towns. They can slip their hands into a person's pockets and take what they want and be long gone before the person realizes their stuff is gone. Jesus uses this word to let us know that the devil is very cunning. In this way, he steals from people. He knows that if he does it outright, his actions will be recognized. Therefore, he steals from people in such a deceptive way that he often accomplishes his evil goal before they even know he has stolen from them. Often... The devil injects thoughts into a person's mind to steal his peace, to steal his joy, and to take his beliefs that God cannot do, God will not do, God does not love you to do, God despises you and he picks you out just to let you down. Let me tell you the Greek word klepto describes a thief's uncontrollable urge to get his hands into someone's pockets so he can take that which doesn't rightfully belong to him. I find it very interesting that this is where we get the word kleptomaniac from which describes a person with a persistent neurotic impulse to steal. Just as a kleptomaniac can't help but steal, the devil can't stop stealing because it is his impulse and his very nature to steal and to create havoc. This is precisely the nature and the behavior of a thief, the thief that Jesus told us about. So understand who the devil is. We need to understand his purpose as well. The text says that the devil comes to steal. Let us make sure we understand what this means. At first glance, it appears that this means to steal. It, it means to kill it, as to take someone's life. But the Greek word here, thuo, uh, which means to sacrifice, it, it's originally referring 
uh, to the sacrificial giving of animals on the altar. It could also uh, mean to sacrifice or to surrender or to give up something that is precious and dear to you. It was particularly used in religious connotation to denote the sacrifice of animals. It had nothing to do with killing in terms of murder. So, so uh, uh, one of the main things the devil wants to kill, and I think this is very important for us to understand, uh, that the devil simply wants to kill your worship. Look at me, look at uh, this, the passage of scripture, if you will, Psalms 22 and verse 3 says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. We make this scripture says, uh, we take the scripture and say, Give praise because God inhabits the praise of his people. However, for us to come into his presence, we must worship him. In order to be in his presence, uh, we must use uh, the tools that is before us to get in the presence of God. And, and in order to get in his presence, we must understand what tools we use to get there. You see, you see, when you walk into the house of the Lord, you don't automatically be in the presence. You have to usher his presence in and how you do that is through worship God, I, I wish i had somebody praying with me today i i feel my little help trying to come on so so but i'm trying to i'm trying to take my time with it uh, y'all pray for me now but uh, you see you see praise must be a part of our morning worship experience and in order to get worship in you gotta you gotta crank it up with praise, God Almighty. Yeah, 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 yeah. We want to be in the presence of the Lord. I be dealing with the devil all week long. When I leave out of here, I'm in the devil's presence. But when I come into the house of the Lord, I must learn how to get in God's presence. I, I hunger to be in his presence. So in order to get there, in order to get in God's presence, we must learn that uh, worship has got to take place. Mm, mm. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I can't go long without uh, mm, the worship experience. I, I hunger for the worship experience. Uh, you see, when we come into the sanctuary to worship, we need to get our minds off the stuff and negative things in life and concentrate as well as focus on God. You see, it's hard to focus on God when you got stuff on your mind that you left or you supposed to have left at home that caused distraction and caused your spirit to be messed up. You can't worship God when you've been fussing with a nagging child. Y'all ain't playing with me today. You can't worship God when you've been picking fusses and fights with your husband or with your wife. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so when you want to get in the presence, and I must tell you, God is selfish when it comes to your praise and your worship because he wants your attention to be on him after all he's done for you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. After all he's brought you through, God demands your praise. He demands your worship because he kept you mm, all week long. Do I have a witness here? He demands, he, he wants you to focus on him. You've been tied up all week long with stuff, worrying yourself to death about stuff. And when you come into the presence of God, God wants your mind free of that stuff and concentrate on him yeah i must tell you 
it's important, it's important uh, to concentrate on the Lord. Our hearts must focus on our God. He is important, I must tell you. I admit, my brothers and sisters, this can be a challenge at times. But when we are being robbed of God's blessings, when our heart is not into it, when that is done, remember Jesus said in St. Mark, the seventh chapter, the sixth verse, he says, he answered and said unto them, well, have Isaiah, Isaiah's prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. It's important to focus on our God. The heart must be focused on worship. Y'all don't hear me. This is why, this is why uh, I hear a lot of people say, well, I didn't get nothing out of the service. You can't blame the preacher. For you not being in the service. You see, in all, you, you got to bring something. Don't always come and expect the preacher to. Mm, Lord have mercy. You expecting the preacher to take your load and carry your load and then try to pump and prime you up for something that's already in you. Do you hear what I'm saying? Praise is something that you do. Nobody should have to make you tell God thank you. Especially you ought to realize. I, all you got to just think about. Think about. Think about what he's done for you. Think about what he brought you through. Think about what he healed you from. Think about what he delivered you from. You got to have a praise already in you i come with the praise i could have been dead sleeping in my grave but the lord kept me do i have a witness here somebody ought to have a praise it's easy it's easy yeah it's easy i'm telling you it's easy to come and then complain complain about what somebody else is not doing but what about you you have a responsibility you have something to bring to the table Amen. and i must take somebody need to hear your praise yeah, yeah. there was a time when we used to have praise and testimony services we don't cut that out people don't testify no more Amen. unless it's revival and then they want to get up but we shouldn't just wait once a year to testify let me ask you a question have God only been good to you once a year think about it we only wait once a year revival time then everybody pop up like popcorn and talk about you should be doing that every Sunday y'all don't hear me now watch this Worship, can I take a little time? Worship right. equals acquisition. Right. Meaning, we don't worship to get stuff. <laughs> but you get stuff based upon your worship. Is this microphone working? Can anybody hear me? Somebody said when praise is, huh? Y'all know it, right? Have you witnessed it? So, so I don't need to pump you to praise God. If you want a blessing, huh? Start praising him. If I'm saying, I, I, I may not have felt good when I first got in here and I may have felt the low when I first sat down but I feel alright right now 
when you release your burdens, somebody said, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there and watch what he would do. Huh? God will send down the blessings. All you got to do is do your part. I can't expect God to do everything. What am I supposed to do? You got a responsibility. Worship brings, watch this, revival and renewal. If you want to if you want to be in the presence of God, worship will revive, regenerate your spirit. It's like getting a fresh shower when you before you get in the shower you were slump, you were you were slow and sluggish and you didn't feel good, but once that water hit you and start rejuvenating your body you feel much better when you get out the shower you feel a little lighter am i right about it well that's what worship is like if you give your your heart and your soul to the lord i tell you he will make your burdens lighter and you will feel better somebody says glory glory hallelujah since I laid my burdens down, I feel better so much. Anybody feel better when you lay your burdens down? Anybody feel better when you give it up to the Lord? He will make it better. Yeah, yeah. Worship with the power of the Holy Ghost produces something it gets you something it it gets you a breakthrough it brings about deliverance it brings peace in your soul and in in your mind and it also give you victory when we worship in spirit and in truth we are preparing the way of the lord when his way is prepared he steps into our service and he does great works in the lives of his people the people that you used to roll your eyes at now you're smiling and blowing kisses at them why because you got something more than hatred in your heart i don't care what they do to you when you give it up to god he makes things better for you i, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I tell you doesn't matter what they say about me what they do to me if I got the love of Jesus in my heart oh I tell you I can sleep peacefully at night y'all don't hear me yeah yeah guess what the devil can't stop your blessing when the Lord is in the middle, I'm getting ready to go to my seat in a few minutes. Give me a little more time. I promise you I'll be finished. In the worship, the devil, even your breakthrough, he can't stop you from being set free. He cannot stop the deliverance. When the devil see God's blessing, watch this, it makes him more angry at you. Pastor Larry, the devil's mad at you. That's why he's been messing with you. He's mad at you because you've been doing a great work. But don't you give up. God's got something greater for you pastor and, and i came to tell you anytime anytime god gets the blessing the devil will start messing but no don't be alarmed don't be alarmed don't be don't be blown out your seat because the devil's messing with you he's supposed to that's his job don't be asking why Lord why me say so why not me huh guess what it happened to Job 
didn't it? Amen. The Bible said a day came when the sons of God <laughs> came amongst the throne of God and the devil came with them. You think you're the only one come to church? Guess what? He'll follow you right in the church. Huh? You can't escape the devil. Let him do his thing. And this is why I said, while you playing, the devil's serious about you. Stop playing with the devil. He ain't nobody to play with because his purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. Now watch this. Watch this. There's a difference, however, between the thief and the robber. This text for examination identifies the actions of that robber. As Malachi has pointed out the actions. Worship. Worshiping God is what we are created to do. Everything we do and should bring glory to God. Because the devil wants to rob you of your blessings. He wants to rob you so that you cannot worship God. He wants to weigh you down with distractions and burdens and problems and sickness and heartaches so that you can't worship God. How many you feel like worshiping God when your mind is on what's going to take place tomorrow on your job or when your mind is on uh, the, the next argument you're getting ready to have, you think you're going to have with your wife when you get home because she didn't fix the meal that you wanted her. Uh, let me stop. <laughs> the enemy knows how to attack you because, you see, he study you. He knows your likes and your dislikes. He study you even when you're sleeping at night. So, so, our job is to, in, in times of distress, worship. Whenever we're hurting, worship. When tears are flowing down your eyes, worship. When we're in our midnight hour, worship. When our soul is fainting within us, worship. Because worship brings power. And the devil cannot fight the power of God. Because, because we were created to worship. We were designed to worship. William Murphy said it best in his hit song, praise is what I do. When I want to get close to you, I lift my hands in praise. Praise is not what I do, not just what I do, but praise is who I am. I praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all times. I vow to praise him. Through the good and the bad. I'll praise him whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through. Because praise is what I do. Because I owe it all to you. Can I tell you the devil is jealous of your praise. He does everything in his power. To steal and kill your worship. But I must tell you, the devil can't steal uh, from you as long as you're focused on the Lord. And let me tell you, the devil took the Lord Jesus up on a high mountain and showed him all the cities of uh, the world and he says to the Lord he says if you just bow down and worship me he says I'll give you all of these cities I'll give you the whole nations but you know 
the interesting thing about the devil he can't give what doesn't belong to him do you hear what I'm saying he'll make you promises that he can't keep he'll show you things uh, that will that will blow your natural mind but the truth be told uh, it's all a lie don't you believe a word that the devil says because it don't belong to him the bible says that the earth is the lord the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein so what i'm trying to tell you that if you're going to give anything up give it to the lord he deserve it matter of fact it's it's his in a way and so uh, the Lord knew uh, what the devil was doing uh, and he told the devil uh, get thee behind me Satan uh, y'all don't hear me uh, that's what we need to do today my brothers and my sisters uh, put the devil in his place uh, take your foot uh, and put him under your feet uh, do I have witness uh, don't let him steal your praise uh, don't let him steal your joy uh, don't let him steal your happiness uh, don't let him take your marriages uh, don't let him try to take your jobs uh, don't let him take your love uh, because the truth be told uh, all that I have uh, God gave it uh, and since God gave it uh, I'm going to give God praises uh, because the truth be told uh, if it had not been uh, for the Lord uh, on my side uh, where uh, would we be today uh, say yes somebody uh, ain't God alright uh, if you're going to praise him uh, praise him uh, don't sit down on God uh, he's been too good to you brought you through too much uh, helped you out uh, when nobody else was there y'all don't hear me the Lord dried your tears from your eyes the Lord was your help in the time of trouble say yes somebody ain't God alright ain't he alright I came to tell you if anybody deserved the praise if anybody deserved the glory if anybody deserved the honor Jesus yes he is Jesus he's alright say yeah say yeah ain't he all right ain't he all right did he make a way for you did he bring you through did he bring you out say yeah he's worthy of the praise he's worthy of the praise when you come into the house of the lord give up the praise when you think about how good he is give up the praise when you think about what he brought you from last night give up the praise don't sit down on him don't sit down on him he's worthy i said he's worthy anybody know he's worthy to be praised my last point that sermon Jesus said I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly that's what I'm working on that's what I'm fighting for and that's why I know every chance the enemy gets He's always attacking, attacking our bodies, attacking our minds, attacking us on every angle just to distract us. But you know, if I was a quitter, if I was a quitter, I wouldn't have came to church today. Amen. I would have, I would have done the lazy thing. As a lot of, I heard Minister Mangan talking about the effects of COVID, but COVID did a lot of damage to our church folk. Some say, well, we, I'm staying at home watching TV. No, you ain't, you're not watching TV. The TV might be watching you, but you ain't watching TV. Amen. Let's just be real about it. 
Some people just downright lazy and don't want to come to church. But if you think about the same God that kept you when family and friends were dying by the hundreds, by the thousands, but he kept you. Huh? He kept you. We've had funerals here at First Baptist Church full. And I didn't hear a one soul getting sick of COVID. Not one. From the crowd, I'm saying, that we've had here. Not one soul got sick. Not to my knowledge. He kept you. That's something we should praise God for. Look, just say, it could have been me. It really could have been me. I was on the highway just, just last week. And I saw a horrible accident. And if I had a, been there about five minutes earlier, it could have been me. Huh? I was reading or listening to the news talking about a gun uh, a, a store clerk was killed in Raleigh. And I go by that store every day and would stop there often. And I thought about it. <laughs> it could have been me. Think about it. God keep us. And you don't even know you got angels protecting you. You can't even see the Lord instead of pumping the brakes on your car. And you don't understand why that car won't move no faster. The Lord instead of pumping the brakes. Why? Because there's an accident a little ways up the road. That could have been you. So while you have the opportunity, the chance, every time, every chance you get, you ought to praise the Lord. Because he is so good and he's so worthy of your praise. Amen. Somebody owe God a praise. Amen. Amen. We owe God a praise. For his goodness and his mercy towards us. We owe God a praise. Amen. Your praise might not be as loud as mine. But you owe God a praise. Amen. We got to tell God something. Can't take his grace for granted. Amen. It ain't cheap grace. But we treat it like it's cheap grace. Amen. He died for us. Amen. That we might have the right to the tree of life. That we might have that abundant life. That he just preached about. Because said the enemy is seeking whom he may devour. Amen. And if your heart is not right with God, amen. We're going to ask that you stand in the presence of Almighty God today. Thank you, Reverend Wright, for letting us know about the thief, the robber, the enemy. Amen. And the abundant life God has given us. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. And if you're looking for a church home, you found it here at First Baptist. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. And you can come on Christian experience. You can come if you've not been baptized, we'll baptize you. And you can come by the letter. Amen. But come. Amen. This is your day. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. Amen. The invitation has been given. Amen. God will wash you over again. He'll make you new. Glory to God. If there not be not one, 
And if you're standing in the need of prayer, amen. We're going to ask that you come to the altar. Amen. And you can come and you can lay your burdens at the feet of Jesus. Let him handle it. It's too heavy for you. You done cried and prayed and done prayed and cried because you haven't given it fully over to him. But if you would just yield it to him, lay it at the foot of Jesus, he will work it out for you. Hallelujah. The Spirit says come. The church says come. Whosoever will, let him come. Lay your burdens at the foot of Jesus. Amen. He said, I will no wise cast you out. He wants to do a new thing in you. He wants to take out that that has been holding you back. That's been hindering you from giving him your all. But today you have an opportunity to lay it at the foot of Jesus. Let him handle it. He has never failed. He has never failed. And if you decided not to come, you just stand where you are and give it all to him. Let him handle it. Amen. Our pastor's going to lead us in prayer at this time. With every head bowed. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this service and this opportunity to come to your throne of grace. We ask, Lord, that you would move in a mighty way among the people that have stepped out in faith. Step forward, whether they come for themselves or they're standing in proxy for someone else. We ask that you would touch them, Lord, as only you can. Perhaps they are burdened about something in their life. And they have been, uh, have been dealing with the enemy who has come to kill, steal, and destroy. Have your way right now. Minister to their every need. Grant their favor right now, their petition, those things that they are seeking you for. Lord, move in a mighty way as only you can. For we seek your face. We seek your worship. We seek you today, O oh Lord. Lord, touch. Touch our loved ones, our family members, those that do not know Jesus Christ in the free pardon of their sins. May they come to know him today. Oh God, deal with us as only you can do, Lord. We need you like never before. This community needs you. We need you in a special way to touch us with your healing love. Somebody might need healing in their body. Healing of that mind, that mindset. That Satan attacks all the time. God give them favor right now to know that you are with them every step of the way. We give your name the praise. For you are the great I am. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. You are the one that's there when we need you most. Pray to the Lord that you will guard our homes and our lives and our loved ones and keep marriages together and keep children and their parents Lord on the on an even kill with one another oh, yes. for you are able to do mightily in our lives yeah. and we honor you for all that you've done all that you're doing in the life of First Baptist churches yes, a church and churches all over this community yes, Lord. Lord continue to bless in the mighty name yes, of Christ Lord. now Lord we bring our individual petitions to you today Touch us right where we are. Take us where you want us to be so that we can be the people that you've called out to worship you, to lift up your name in praise. For this is our prayer. We ask it all in the powerful, all-encompassing name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In his name, we indeed do pray. And let the people of God say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Let's say amen one more time. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise in the house.
Oh, we can do better than that. We praise him in the house. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are now just right where you're standing. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the service. We're happy for our visiting friend today and those who have come to worship. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. And now, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us. Now, henceforth, and forevermore.